we have started up our Lego robot editor. Uh, this is the home edition, but that's okay. The education system is very similar. Let's take a switch and we'll move this up here. Now, remember this divides our robot path or program into two ways. It's already set up for the touch sensor. So if the touch sensor is pressed, it will go and do this part of the code. If the touch sensor is not pressed, it will perform this part of the code. Right, so let's assume that it is pressed, the touch sensor is pressed. First thing we want to do is to, as a precaution, to stop the motors. We'll take a move tank command and we'll just use the off command. Our motors are in B and C. Next, we want to send our robot backwards away from the obstacle. So we'll have enough room to um, turn without hitting the obstacle. Now, we'll um, send, in my case, I sent it back from about minus 40 on both motors. That's a moderate speed. We don't need to go a full ro wheel rotation about a third of a wheel rotation is good for me in this particular case. Now next we want our robot to turn away from the line. Um, going backwards has given us enough room to turn without hitting the obstacle. So we turn by putting um, say something like minus 20, it's a nice moderate speed turn, and 20 on the others. Those two motors it will give us a gentle turn on the spot, the same power in both motors, so they'll return on the spot. And again, we don't want to turn very far. In my case, about a third of a wheel rotation for both B and C will be fine. Now, next, we want to go forwards in a curve. We can move that up there, and our motors of B and C Whoops, I've got that in the wrong spot. That's better. Our motors B and C are 75 at the moment. If we're going in a curve, we change those to say about 35 and about 25, and we want them on. And so this would take our robot in a nice gentle curve, but remember, it will do that for about one one hundredth of a second and then go out, so we'll need to put this in a loop. So let's go and get a loop. This one will do. We'll move the loop up there and move our code for going around the obstacle inside. Now, this will give us a loop which will keep turning. At the moment, though, it's turning forever. We don't want that. Um, we'll go to a color sensor and reflected light intensity. And we've, uh, at the moment, it's set up so that it will st jump out of this if it sees black at 50. In my particular case, I know that the calibration I've got, I need 45 there. So what happens in this case, um, in summary, is that if our uh, particular robot has sees the um, the touch sensor not pressed, it just goes along and does that and nothing happens. It keeps doing all the rest of the program. But if the touch sensor is pressed, it jumps up here. It will stop both motors. Um, it will back away um, a little way to give it enough room to turn from the obstacle so that it doesn't hit the obstacle when it turns. It will turn on the spot. Um, around about a third of a wheel rotation. And then in a gentle curve, with one motor on 35 and another on 25, it'll go in a little sort of semicircular sort of curve and keep going and keep going and keep going until the it sees uh, black. Now, we've got a couple of problems with this though. First of all, uh, if I tried it, it wouldn't work because my touch sensor is on port 3. That's important. And 
I know that my color sensor is on port 4. So that should be OK. So this will work for my particular robot. Uh, yours will be almost certainly a bit different. You may have different motor connections. Your, um, your touch sensor may be in a different spot. Your calibration will almost certainly be different. But it, this gives you a bit of an idea of how you could approach getting around an obstacle.